Welcome back to Optimal Bone Health with Dr. Doug. Today, I want to talk about CTX or C telepeptide, which is a bone biomarker that we can find in blood that helps us to determine what is going on with osteoclasts or the cells that break down bone. I'm going to talk about six ways to bring down our CTX naturally. So we're going to go through all of those and stick around till the end because I have a free offer I want to tell you about that everybody should take advantage of because it is so great. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so there are so many things actually that have been studied in conjunction with CTX, and I'm pretty excited about this. The first thing I wanna talk about actually is not a way to reduce CTX, it's a way to prevent it from going up. So this one I, I did a whole video on, so I won't give you all the details, but this was a video that was looking at the difference between animal protein and plant protein intake. And so I talk about a protein forward diet, but I get so many questions about about people that are following a vegan diet and vegetarian diet and how do they substitute. And the quick answer is this, which is if you substitute plant proteins for animal proteins, your CTX will go up. So number one natural way to reduce CTX is eat animal protein if you're gonna eat protein the way that we re are recommending it and that'll prevent your CTX from going up from eating plant proteins. So number one, don't eat plant proteins as your primary source of protein. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is resistance training, aerobic training, and exercise in general. So in the P1 and P video that I, I recorded today, you can find this separately of how to increase P1 and P, which is the bone building marker. There's a lot of studies looking at P1 and P. A lot of times they'll measure NTX, which is the urine version of CTX, but they're comparing bone building to bone breakdown biomarkers with exercise. And what we can see from a bone breakdown perspective is that some exercise will uh, cause more breakdown than others, specifically aerobic exercise. So running very specifically will cause uh, more CTX to be found in blood. So more bone breakdown uh, per event than is any other form. Resistance training will tend to push P1 and P up. So resistance training causing bone building, and it can have a mild reduction in CTX or no change at all in CTX. Uh, but what we're basically seeing is resistance training will push P1 and P up, CTX down, um, but all exercise sort of has that same impact, but the more aerobic you do, the lower CTX will generally go. We see this pretty consistently in the things that have been studied when it comes to exercise in the bone biomarkers. The third way to reduce CTX is through whole body vibration. Now, this is one that's really important to understand the details of. I have a video that I put out recently with Dr. Rubin uh, from Merodyne, which has a, a very low amplitude vibration, um, low force vibration um, compared to some of the other products out there. This study that I'm going to point out here on whole vibration, which was a small study on 10 people from 2012. Um, but this study looked at a much larger amplitude vibration, and it's more similar to the, the other company. I'm actually interviewing a doctor from this company today uh, called PowerPlate. Um, and PowerPlate is higher amplitude, more force, several Gs of force. That's what they measure in this. And so this is more of that type, not the Merodyne type. But what they found is here is that after eight weeks of whole body vibration, um, that there was a significant reduction in CTX. Now, unfortunately, they didn't actually give us the, the raw data. It was just a statistically significant reduction, which might not be that much, but it's still headed in the right direction. So it's kind of interesting to think that vibration could have this impact, but again, not a long enough study to know what the, the benefit is that. Is that a, a reduction in bone mineral uh, density? Is that an increase in bone mineral density? It's, it's kind of hard to know. There's going to be a video coming out with the, the physician from PowerPlate, um, in the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't seen that uh, and you're watching this video, uh, stay tuned for that. But overall, I think we can say that, that based off of this research that there is an impact on bone. Again, it's just a little hard to know what it is, but this study does show a reduction in CTX with the higher amplitude, higher force uh, whole body vibration plates. All right, so before I get into the supplements and hormone side, uh, if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. The subscribe button helps me to help other people. So more people looking for bone health and osteoporosis questions will find this channel if you click the subscribe button. So it helps me to serve my mission and the mission of our company. So thanks for grabbing that. Secondly, 
If you haven't already and you want to watch me put all this information in one place, join our free masterclass, class that we run every two to three weeks. Uh, if you can join us there, you will watch how we string all these things together into a bone health program um, and then also have the ability to ask a live Q&A uh, for the uh, masterclass at the end. And this is something that so many people have seen benefit from. So please join us there if you haven't already. So if you haven't seen the P1 and P video that I did, take a look at that because this same supplement that I'm about to talk about is also listed there. So this supplement called French Maritime Pine Bark Extract, the uh, brand name that they were studying in this particular study was called Oligopen. Um, and Oligopen was studied in 2019 on 40 postmenopausal osteopenic women. And they were given about, uh, I think it was 250 milligrams a day. And what they saw is a increase in P1 and P, which is why it's my P1 and P video, but also a significant decrease in CTX. Now, if you've heard me talk about this before, generally we're gonna see CTX and P1 and P move together. So we're gonna see bone turnover either increase overall or decrease overall. And then our goal is just to manipulate it so that you're seeing more building than, than breakdown so that you can continue to improve BMD and bone quality. Um, but this is one of those areas where we saw P1 and P, the building go up and CTX actually go down. Now, the levels and the amount at which that occurred, we don't know because they did not publish the actual raw data. My guess is it's not all that much, uh, but it's still enough to say that possibly there's an impact of using this product. Uh, and again, this is something that we, we've kind of started to implement into our program. Uh, we'll see how well it's tolerated. So uh, something that is new to us that could potentially be leveraged. Again, that's Oligopen. There's a couple of products that use that that are available commercially. Okay, so this next product I want to talk about is Milk Basic Protein. I've talked about this before. You can either get Milk Basic Protein through a supplement or you can actually get the same things through raw milk if you have access to that and it's legal in your state. But Milk Basic Protein includes lactoferrin, it includes growth factors, it includes a lot of other things that are found in raw milk but not in pasteurized milk. So it's not the general commercially available milk that's out there. It's the things that are removed uh, or at least killed uh, during the pasteurization process. So milk basic protein has a lot of different things in it. This research that I'm about to present here showed that milk basic protein when given as a supplement reduced CTX by 32%, which is a lot. 32% reduction in CTX in a small increase in P1 and P that were both statistically significant. And so again, I just said before, we don't generally see them uh, move separately. We see them go up and down together. This is another case where as a supplement, we saw uh, CTX go down and P1 and P go up. Uh, so kind of a cool uh, potential leveraging here if you have the ability to tolerate raw milk or take a, a milk basic protein, which is probably going to be better tolerated, but still potentially not tolerated by all. Uh, but these are the cool things that are found in raw dairy um, in a, a natural form that can potentially help with bone. So the next thing I want to talk about is estrogen. We know that estrogen, when studied as a part of traditional hormone replacement therapy, will increase bone mineral density and reduce fracture risk. We saw that in the Women's Health Initiative. We've seen it in numerous studies. So we know that that's true. We don't really need a study to show what it does to CTX because, again, we know the end game, which is reduced fracture risk. That's what we want to know. That's what but we don't know about most things, which is why we do the bone uh, turnover marker stuff. But I did find one study on estrogen and even a very low dose estrogen reduced CTX or bone breakdown, which is what I would anticipate seeing. It's nice to see it, that it and even that it doesn't take that much estrogen to do it. I'm not saying to use an ultra low dose, but I think it's nice that we can see that it does have an impact even at a low dose. But I would still recommend using what we've seen in the past, which is to get your blood levels to a certain threshold so that we can know that we're going to have the impact on bone that we want to. All right, the next one is testosterone. Now, as I mentioned earlier, testosterone is not studied in women for anything other than sexual dysfunction because the endocrine society and most physicians feel like testosterone deficiency is not a thing for women. I'm here to tell you that that's garbage and that really testosterone deficiency is a big deal for women, which totally makes sense when you look at the fact that testosterone is the primary sex hormone in women and that women will have five to 10 times more testosterone than estrogen at any point in her life. So why don't we talk about testosterone replacement when it comes to aging and menopause and symptoms of menopause and symptoms of aging, which we really should do if we look at aging as a disease. But anyway, here's a study looking at men uh, 2021, 177 men looking at testosterone and the impact of testosterone on bone health is that we saw a reduction in CTX. Now that makes sense when you think about what happens in testosterone in men because testosterone replacement in men will give them some estrogen. 
And like I just said in that last study, it doesn't take a lot of estrogen to have an impact on CTX. So for men, testosterone replacement will not only help with the symptoms of aging and symptoms of low libido and energy and brain fog and all the things that it helps with, but it will aromatize to estrogen and it will improve CTX, it will improve bone health, it will improve um, cognition, it will improve cardiovascular risk factors. So testosterone is good for both women and men and it will improve CTX, which is our goal today to show. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is uh, a nutrition aspect. So um, I've talked about nutrition quite a bit. Um, eating adequate calories, adequate protein will increase P1 and P. I think that's pretty clear. I've talked about plums, or at least dried plums in the form of prunes before, and I have a whole video on that as well. But prunes will decrease CTX, will increase bone mineral density, and uh, there are studies to demonstrate that. But specifically here, what we can see is that the 100 grams, which is around five prunes, which might be a lot for some people, but five prunes will decrease CTX both at three, six, and 12 month intervals. Uh, according to this study, there is a potential downside of that, so just be aware that um, there is a fair amount of carbohydrate that comes along with that, a fair amount of sugar that comes along with that, not to be tolerated by everybody, and there's obviously the potential impact on the GI system of eating that many prunes uh, so I wouldn't recommend necessarily eating them at one time. Uh, but the impact is likely through uh, the boron, high levels of boron that are in plums. We don't really know that, and I've not seen boron studied independently, but we know boron is an important micronutrient to have uh, either in supplement or getting through diet, and this is one way to get it through diet. All right, so all of those ways to naturally reduce CTX, all of them could potentially be used, depending on risk-benefit analysis, but all of them could be used as a comprehensive bone health solution. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, again, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Help me help others. And if you haven't already seen our Bone Foundations course, or if it's been a while since you went through it, we have taken our Bone Foundations course, which we created as a product to sell for our company, we have taken it and made it completely free. We did this because I'm so compelled to help people with osteoporosis to recognize that you do not have to be stuck in this mindset that there's nothing to do and that drugs are your only option. You have a lot of options. There's a time and a place for drugs, but there's so many things that we could potentially do from a bone health perspective. So the Bone Foundations course is now free. That has at least 16, and we have, I think we have several more planned that we're gonna add to it, but we have several modules that you go through uh, and a workbook that goes along with it to help you to string together the pieces of creating a bone health um, uh, program, custom bone health program based off of biomarkers. We have nutrition guides. You have access to our ebook, uh, or you can download the free book, which I have behind me. Um, you can download that book, or you can buy it on Amazon. Um, it also gives you access to our Health Span Nation. Health Span Nation is where you get access to ask me questions on a weekly Q&A. Um, you have access to our community of people who are not only patients, but also people in the HealthSpan Nation asking each other questions, leveraging each other's experience, and then also access to our discounts for affiliate programs that are specific to our patients and to HealthSpan Nation. So definitely check that out. Look for the links to all these things in the uh, description below, and I will see you on the next video.